What's up, everyone? Welcome back to District Nats episode 1.13, I think. But it doesn't think really correct. matter. doesn't really matter because it is the best Nationals episode we have ever done by far. That is because James Wood is here, ladies and gentlemen. It is glorious. Glorious. I mean, the sun's a little brighter. The, the birds are chirping. The grass smells a little bit better. Uh, it, the heat doesn't really bother you as much, although it is still kicking my ass. Uh, James Wood is here, ladies and gentlemen, and it is a, a great time. We're going to talk about it all. But first, Trey, what's going on? Nick, it was a hot week. It was a hot week of Nats baseball, and it was a hot week weather-wise. Jesus, I mean, some yep. of those some of those games in D.C. this week were boiling. Yep. Um, but as you know, I, as you said, it's kind of you kind of don't even care because you're there to see James Wood. You're there to see right. C.J. Abrams, Mackenzie Gorse. These guys from the trade, they're coming up, um, and you know, it seems like the youth movement is is really finally officially begun uh, in, in in D.C. And I'm super excited for it. Yeah, and I mean, we'll we'll just start right there and then get into all of the other stuff that happened this week because James Wood is one thing, and that would be, you know, a week's worth of news in and of itself. But there was a lot of other things that happened of like major note, not just mm-hmm. like oh we could talk about this, talk about that. Like there was actually a lot that went down this week, so we have a lot to cover. But obviously, we got to start with James Wood. Um, I've been super impressed. And somehow, like, I'm not surprised, but surprised at the same time. Like, I, mm-hmm. you know, felt in my plums that he was ready for a long time. <laughs> um, and just the, the injury and circumstance kind of just played a part in keeping him down a little bit longer, which, you know, at the end of it all, isn't really going to be matter. It isn't really going to matter much, you know, that he was down there probably a month or a couple weeks too long or, you know, longer than he could have been, whatever. Mm -hmm. So the point is he's up now. He has a hit in every single game. His on-base percentage is through the roof right now. I think he's been on multiple times every single game, if I'm not mistaken. Um, He initially started batting sixth. It was behind Ildemar Vargas in the most Davey Martinez lineup construction ever. Um, And then naturally he earned his way to the three-hole where he belonged um, and then proceeded to hit a home run. Uh, Mm -hmm. So... Uh, Oppo, I might add, too. It was just a very, like, you know, go with the pitch swing, and it still went, like, 380 feet for an Oppo bomb. So it was a a great debut. Um, There are some growing pains. You and I were just talking about that. Um, He's learning left field, and I know a lot of people will be like, oh, well, outfield's outfield. And I think to an extent you're right because there was a play where Lipscomb's going back uh, on a ball, and it's clear It's clear as day it's got to be the left fielder coming to get that, and Wood lets it drop. Like, that's an outfield play. That's not specific to left field, mm-hmm. you know, specifically. Um, but there's another play, and actually Kevin Franzen, who I liked at first, and then he's gotten very annoying. Uh, but he actually made a really good point when talking about Wood is that one thing that is unique and specific to left field is the, the lefty slice. Like, when lefties go the other way and that slice tailing away from you that's unique uh, you know to to left field especially going towards your arm side as opposed to when you're playing right field if something's slicing away from you it's going to your glove side so it's a little bit different um, getting reads on that you could tell there was one in the Met series lefty slice that exact play and Wood caught it but you could tell it like it wasn't the most routine looking thing in the world. Not comfortable. Right. So there are some growing pains there. Um, you know, he's a left fielder for now. I highly, highly, highly doubt he's a left fielder for much longer. Um, yeah, and we can talk about that, you know, later in the episode. But uh, not to say he can't play left field. I just think, you know, there's going to be more shuffling is more so yeah. what I was saying. Um, but anyways, yeah, I can live with the growing pains because what we've seen at the plate, um, not only like the production, but the discipline That's is, the big thing. It is so incredible to watch. It's so exciting. Um, you can feel the energy between Wood and Abrams and just the life, which again, we'll talk to, we'll talk about here in just a second. The life that's being brought back to this team is super exciting. Yeah. Good energy this week for sure. Yeah. 
uh, up and down the order, uh, especially <laughs> kind of when in midweek we saw you know the full roster moves take yeah. place. You know we had Rosario out, but then it became Manessas and Senzel uh, right. getting dropped, and then uh, you know that kind of just it felt like these guys know that it's their time now. Uh, mm-hmm. It's it, you know, and they they want to bring it, and you know would we we. we we, I like what you said is like we expected it but we weren't sure because mm-hmm. you know any 21 year old that comes up you know is gonna potentially Crap struggle they're yeah. young mm-hmm. uh, it happens but he's really looked mature at the play he's, lo- he's looked like he's been in the league for five ten years by his approach like he's just he's not chasing super bad he's, he's had a couple chases but you know that's normal yeah. Um, yeah. mostly he's taking those close pitches making pitchers work getting his pitch and even on the case of that home run, going with the pitch because mm-hmm. he has such easy power. He doesn't have to swing hard. Uh, he, he doesn't have to pull the ball. Like we we always talk about, you know, some guy like C.J. Abrams, for example. We like him to pull the ball because he doesn't have quite as much raw power. But James Wood has raw power. He doesn't need to pull the ball to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Um, and he, we, you know, there's a lot of comparisons going to that other guy who came up uh, one time and had <laughs> extremely good play discipline and could hit the yeah. ball for power the other way. Might want to slow our roll a little bit there because Wood is, doesn't quite have the same eye there, but there are some similarities, so I can understand what people are going for there. Um, but yeah, in, in, in the outfield, it's I said it in our short, like he just he's not he's not comfortable reading the ball yet. Uh, I noticed in spring training too, even he's he's playing right and center field sometimes. Yeah. He just wasn't reading the ball that well, so that's something he's got to work on. Um, but that's basically the only negative that you can kind of point to in his game right now, and he's he's been here for seven days. Like, that's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, it, it's been great. And the thing is, again, they said this on the broadcast, but, like, when he first got here, he wasn't elevating anything. And you're kind of just like, ah, shit, here we go again. <laughs> you know, the Nats, like just telling everyone to hit ground balls and you know wood was getting hits but it's just like all right you know part of the reason not the entire reason but part of the reason to call this guy up is to be that power threat right you're not exactly going to get hit home runs when you're just hitting ground balls um so but that was just more so his discipline as opposed to you know the nats telling him yeah. this is he, what de- he, he's, he doesn't do. try to force anything right uh, and, yeah that's... exactly like he he's not trying to force it he takes what he's given you know th- there's some strikeouts where it looks like he's a little bit defensive but again it's major league pitching he there is going to be some adjustment um but you know he's all he doesn't qualify for like league you know leaders or anything like that but he's already up there in average exit velocity he's up there in hard hit percentage his walk percentage granted that's going to obviously alter as he gets more of a sample size he's only had 31 plate appearances so far but like his walk percentage is near 20 percent which you know if that's sustainable hell yeah but i genuinely don't see it (laughs) i think it'll drop but i don't think it'll drop that much no no i don't think it will either but like i could see 15 can you imagine a rookie sustaining a 20 percent walk rate <laughs> just uh no <laughs> yeah um so yeah it, it was super impressive there's going to be growing pains but like you know it, it's just so exciting it it felt like one of the best times to be a Nats fan in like the past three years it i just, couldn't agree more it, it it just feels so much more lively like the results in terms of the games are about the same <laughs> and, yeah you know, no yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that but, you know, the the process, I guess, there's just much more to root for and much more to, to keep you invested. So, like, that definitely that helps. Um, definitely. So, yeah, thank God James Wood is here. On the flip side of that, we kind of alluded to this last week. Granted, at the, at the time we last recorded, we didn't know um, James Wood was going to be called up. But we knew that Eddie Rosario was going to be, like, his life on the Nats, is, it was not much longer yeah Um, and so he was the corresponding move for that and you know that's it's not a a deadline acquisition but like going from rosario as your everyday outfielder to james wood as your everyday outfielder is a significant upgrade um so it wasn't a trade deadline acquisition but it was still you know effectively that for the team Uh, but they didn't stop there and this is where i really got the energy like james wood again Mm -hmm. is one thing but what I really, really loved is just the commitment to not not doing the bare minimum, which we yeah. have done for years now. Like, 
regardless of the Juan Soto trade and how well that's worked out, and regardless of you know last year and overperforming to some extent, we've always done the bare minimum. We we just have, but this year, credit where credit is due, they're not doing that right now. And I love that, and that's why I feel so much more enthusiastic about this team than I have in so many years, because, you know, Rosario is one thing. The very next, actually, I don't remember what came first. Um, they swapped Drew Millis for Riley Adams, which I don't think that's a Drew Millis thing. Riley Adams was just tearing it up at Triple Yeah, he had a great month. Yeah, when he went so down there. I, I think they were just like, okay, we need to fix this lineup. So we're going to call Adams back up. It, again, it, Millis was, was fine in his very limited role, um, but hopefully it was an avenue for getting Adams more ABs at the, the major league level. Um, and he's come back and has, you know, picked up where he left yeah, off. Yeah, he, he had a great a. game, uh, yeah. his first start. He's terrible defensively still, but, you know, if he's driving in runs, then, you know, you can kind of Yeah, live, you can take it or leave it, it. yeah. <laughs> um, the very next day, or it might have been the same day, again, I'm – the timeline, it all happened all at once. So, so much excitement. Uh, but they finally, finally, finally optioned Joey Manessis to AAA Rochester, which is fine with me. I, I don't think, I think that's a Yadiel Hernandez type thing where he goes <laughs> yeah. to AAA and that's the farm upstate. Like, you know, I doubt we ever see Joey Manessis again on that. It, it was fine two years ago, but like, we got to realize how long it has been since this guy has been really worth anything. Yeah. Um, and they, they called up Juan Yepes, who I, I think I tweeted this out, might only be a marginal upgrade, but it's an upgrade nonetheless. And at the very least, they're not trying to do the same old thing and pretending it works. Yeah. Right. And Juan Yepes has delivered, you know, in, in some areas, uh, you know, he, he's had some great picks at, at first base. He had a double driving in a run against his former team. I think he singled in his first at bat yeah. in the majors. Some solid, solid play appearances this season. Yeah, so it, it's been better. Um, and then the last one, which I think was a little bit of a surprise because it happened a couple of days later, they DFA'd Nick Senzel, which mm-hmm. I'm okay with. Don't get me wrong, I'm just surprised because they didn't have an obvious guy in the the minors to replace him. They opted with Trey Lipscomb, who we've seen a, a couple times before. And ultimately, I'm okay with it because they're just letting the young guys play. Yeah. Right? They're giving Lipscomb a shot to to play every day at the major leagues. And subsequently, they promoted Brady House to AAA, which might have been a little bit too soon, but Rochester is an easier place to hit than Harrisburg is. So it's probably in an effort to jumpstart Brady House's offense production too. So they had to clear third base anyway. So Lipscomb might have been the beneficiary of that. But regardless... I'm, I'm okay with it because the the difference between Senzel and Lipscomb is not all that great, uh, especially with how poor Senzel was this year. Um, we took a chance. It didn't work. They, they cut ties and they moved on. They didn't try to pretend like they were going to get anything for him at the trade deadline. It just worked really, really well. And, uh, you know, I, I really love that they're trying. They're trying to mix and match and jumpstart the offense. And to their credit, I think it actually has worked. We just haven't gotten the results because our bullpen has blown it. But I think we've had double-digit hits in in every game against the Cardinals. They're playing today on Monday as we're recording this. But we've had double-digit hits like every single game since Lipscomb came up and obviously the other move. So it's working. We just can't we're, – we're still struggling with, you know, runners in scoring position and cashing in on those hits and stringing them together. But overall, the offense kind of has been better. Yeah, they've played. They had a pretty solid week, uh, all things considered. I just want to read uh, our July Fourth lineup and then compare it to Open yesterday's day. lineup oh, yesterday. or uh, one of the lineups from the Cardinal series. Okay. Um, so this is July Fourth is against the Mets. This is before some of those moves. Abrams, Thomas, Harold Ramirez, Manessis, <laughs> Wood hitting fifth, Senzel, Adams, Vargas, Young, and now. Pretty much, uh, let's go to this one on July 6th, Saturday, because we scored 14 runs in that game. The lineup looks like this. Abrams, Thomas, Wood, Winker, Ruiz, Garcia, Yepes, Lipscomb, Young. You can't tell me that that is not a huge upgrade um, in terms of the offense. And then you also have Lipscomb's glove. Now, he hasn't really showed his glove quite yet uh, since he came back up, but we know it's there. yesterday or the day before. 
Yeah, his he's not necessarily a third baseman anyways. Like, his arm isn't necessarily suited for that, but they kind of don't have a place to put him. You can't put him in second. Garcia's been really, really good. Mm-hmm. He had an excellent week as well. Yes, he um, did. Speaking, like, Abrams and Wood were great, and then you had Garcia, who might have might have had the best week of everybody. He had a four-hit yeah. game. He had a multi-homer game. Uh, yeah. He was all over the and place. And then was promptly benched the next day. Yeah, uh, but now they can't do that. <laughs> uh, or not as easily, at least. There's... There's, uh, it seems like they're going with, with him as the everyday guy, which they should. Right. Um, and yeah, so it was. Uh, that's just an interesting the difference between the lineups. Uh, how quickly they decided, what direction they're going, and they didn't wait around. Like you said, they did not wait around. They said, let's cut this dead weight. Let's get these youth, the youth movement up, and let's start making something happen here. Let's, uh, you know, even and you know the record is probably gonna not change that much. Right. But at least we have these guys getting that experience uh, for for next season. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in the, like, minds and for the perspective of the front office, it gives you a month or just shy of a month to figure out what you are as a team, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I think everyone, for the most part, is on the same page that they should sell. Um, But, you know, you're doing your due diligence, right? You're giving the guys there a shot, right? Because, you know, the guys that you will trade or could trade, Jesse Winker, Lane Thomas, Kyle Finnegan, you know, being the the key names there. It's not like you dislike them. It's Mm -hmm. not like, you know, you're wanting to cut ties one way or another, like Corey Dickerson last year, right? You want them around if you can compete. You just don't know if you can compete, right? And I, I think they're a year early, maybe two years early in terms of truly competing, uh, not just like lucking into a wild card spot like the Marlins last year. Um, but again, the the front office is giving the team a shot. So if they go on a Mets streak where they win 15 of 19, well, then you're probably looking at this team a little bit different, right? I think a lot of people would, right? But if they can't do that, if they can't go on a hot streak like that, then you know you kind of know where you're at and you can do what's best for the team at that point, um, which I like. So uh, it, it's letting the young guys play, but it's also just it's what's best for the team and for the yeah. franchise, which they, they've been so reluctant to do for the past couple of years. And it feels like, you know, part of it is just the young talent being ready, but also it just it, it's a change in philosophy for whatever reason, whatever the trigger was that that got to this point. The other roster move that happened earlier today as we're recording this um, they optioned DJ Hurst to AAA and uh, recalled Joanna Doan. Um, I wouldn't be too alarmed about this. Hers has never pitched more than 100 innings in any season he's ever played. So it's more load management. He'll miss one start this week. Then he gets the all-star break. So he's effectively getting like two weeks off. Um, I think that's fine. Mm-hmm. And they're going to have to do that with like Mitchell Parker and possibly even Jake Irvin too right Mm -hmm. later in the season so they're getting hers out of the way now so hopefully hers can give parker irvin or whoever else a break later on so i wouldn't be too concerned about that but the the flip side of calling up yohanna don he's been working as a reliever and part of the reason why the results the game results haven't been uh, much different is Davies bullpen management is still as bad as it's ever been arguably even worse uh yeah it was a bad week it was yeah. a bad week for Dave Martinez bullpen management yeah like it, it at was, least you it could point bad. to at least two that he lost based to, on right at least I mean there's it, it arguably got to three the point if massive reporters are coming out before the game saying Davies in a bind because of mismanagement right he's used the same five guys over and over and over again to the point where they pitched like six out of the last seven days because the Nats are in a stretch without any off days right now. Like, yeah, I got a, I got a number for you real quick. Okay, um, go, go, go. Regarding yeah. that. Um, yeah. In the top 11 pitchers and appearances since uh, July 1st, the Nats have five of them. Yep. Five out of the, 11. That's the, that's the five, right? Yeah, that's the, yeah, it's literally, it's a, uh, Harvey Finnegan, Floro, Law. Garcia, and Law. Law, yeah. by the way, is second in the whole league in reliever innings pitched, by the way. So he's been getting cooked basically all and year. This is every and doing a pretty good year. job, by the way. Yeah, he's been solid. But, like, this is every single year. Yeah. Every single year. So I, I talked about it a couple of weeks ago. Not necessarily Nat specific, but just, like, the, the change in philosophy 
uh, for major league teams as a whole is like I think the long reliever is going to have a renaissance here in the next couple of years. It has to. It has to, right? So, you know, I said that a couple of weeks ago. Now you see Joanna Don, who's working out as reliever, but can go multiple innings because he has starter experience, right? So the Nats are trying to do that. He'll probably be an opener on the the her start date, <clears throat> uh, whenever that is. Uh, I believe that's Friday, um, but you know. They, they just needed some help because the bullpen was about to die <laughs> right before they got to the All-Star break. Like, it, it's it's not fair to them, right? There there are times where they just need to be better. Like, Finnegan blew a save the other day. He, he gave up a home run. He needs to close that out. It's a one-run game. You need to close that out, right? But everyone else is pitching, like, for their, <laughs> for their livelihood every single day because, you know, they're just bare bones. They have no no gas left in the tank and they're getting shelled. I mean, Hunter Harvey is getting Harvey's, Mason Thompson treatment. Like it, it's, it's bad right been, now. It's just like, it's not fair to him to, to do like they, he had him pitch like four out of five days this week. It, it's the Mason after Thompson like, thing. Yeah. After like a, basically a full month in June where he really didn't pitch well because he's, he, they're gassed. They're just, this is why before the season we were just nailing, hitting the nail on the head. Like, Pitching depth. Please get mm-hmm. sign some pitching depth. They yep. they didn't do enough. Like they got Floro. Uh, their other signing was Matt Barnes, who got DFA like two weeks into the season, and yep. that was pretty much it. And now you're seeing the, the issue of you don't have enough guys, and you're sitting here with Tanner Rainer, Rainey on your roster, <laughs> just doing nothing for most of the time. Like, yep. and Jordan Weems is horrible now. So I don't know. It's and and you know what's crazy is like that day where. Masson was like, oh, Davey's in a bind. He's going to have to use his bottom three. Well, first of all, like, yeah, they, they might be the bottom three at the end of it all. But, like, we don't know because Davey doesn't pitch them, <laughs> yeah, you know? No. So it's, like, it's hard to even rank them appropriately. I mean, yeah, a reliever they, pitching once a week is probably not going to be as effective as they should be. <laughs> right. So it's, like, you know, Rainey went, like, two weeks without pitching. Yeah. So I, I get why they're holding on to him, but, like, in order for him to get better, he has got to face pitching. But my, my point being, like that day, I think it was, I think it was Mackenzie Gore's day, um, or maybe Patrick Corbin. Anyways, it was a short outing, and uh, Jacob Barnes came in, pitched two and two thirds, gave up one run, and then um, it wasn't. Oh, it was Jordan Weems. I think he went uh, one inning, gave up one run, and then Rainey pitched a scoreless inning. So basically, they hey, I think covered that was like. Yeah, half the game, right, and gave up two runs. Like, you will take that. Like, they can be serviceable, right? Uh, imagine that. <laughs> they can be uh-huh. serviceable if you actually pitch them. So it, it's not just, like, not having the guys. You know, the Nats are not the only team without, like, eight guys they, they fully trust. It's management, right? You mm-hmm. can't use the same guys over and over and over again. If you're going to be a successful team... Right, you got to learn how to mix and match the back end of your bullpen for sustained success, not just success that week or that series. Yeah, they're just gassed. It's just yeah. it's it's pretty much that simple. Uh, they've just thrown so many innings and had a lot of appearances and a lot of pitches too. I mean, that's yeah. Harvey's thing. You a look lot at his long innings. Har- Harvey, you look at his like games and innings. Like he's up there, but he's not like at the very top. But he's thrown a lot of pitches in his more recent outings because his command is just not there. He's tired. He's, he's losing pitches further than he normally does, throwing a lot more balls, walking more batters. Yeah, his glove um, side's flying open just because yeah, you and can tell that's fatigue. He's just tired. And it's uh, this is, you know, he had similar thing last year before he actually went on the injured list uh, last year where Davey was just using him so much and he was starting to feel it. Like, it's just right. you can't eventually you have to use some of these other guys even if you don't want to it's just that simple yeah so ho- hopefully Adon gets us to the all-star break and then we can kind of press reset but this is going to be an issue um and it's almost like you can't go six-man rotation at any point because your bullpen needs so much help yeah and, and uh yeah, obviously gray which i don't know right. if we even talked about him no yet. I, I was just gonna um, bring that up yeah, Gray is is has been transferred to the sixty day IL. He's more than likely gonna have uh, Tommy John. Tommy John. It's not yeah. confirmed, but like it doesn't look very good. So yeah. he was you know supposed to come back around now, and it's not he happening. Had, he so had you multiple lose. rehab starts. Yeah, uh, his last one he was like he was topping out at like ninety miles an hour. It was 
it was concerning, and then they basically were like, yeah, we're shutting him down. So you lose him as a potential option. Uh, you might get Cavalli back, but, you, you know, coming off of Tommy John, what are you, you going to get? You don't know. So, uh, yeah. Trevor st- Williams hasn't even begun throwing again yet. Yeah, so. yeah. We don't know what's going on with him, whether he's even going to be here after the deadline. If, they, if he does somehow get traded, I'm not sure. Um, but there's definitely question marks about just getting the innings, like just finding those innings um, yeah. to get this team through the season because there's there's going to be innings limits with hers. There's going to be innings limits with um, potentially Irvin and definitely Parker, like you said. So, yeah, just finding where those innings are going to come from is going to be a tough uh, tough battle for the second half. Yeah, so it, it you know. It, Good thing we got a genius battle. running it, right? Right, I know. Um, <laughs> you know, hers will come back at some point. Um, but he's, I'm effectively viewing like Parker and hers as like one entity for the rest of the season, just cause they're both going to need innings limits. Yeah. Um, Tim Kate has been pitching in Rochester. He's been uh, solid as a reliever, but I don't think he's on the 40 man. Joe LaSorsa, who we saw last year, uh, same thing. Um, he can be a reliever if we need him, but again, these will need corresponding moves. Jackson Rutledge is still in AAA. He is on the 40 man roster, but you know, <laughs> it just is what it is at that point. Uh, Thad Ward, who we saw last year, not on the 40 man roster anymore, but you know, could fill innings. Amos Willingham. So it's like there's guys, but you know, you can see why they have the guys up that they do. Yeah, that's and again, that's why we were saying in off season to sign some depth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So which will be another so priority next problem. off season. So for sure, uh, we'll see. Um, The other big news of the week happened yesterday as the all-star rosters were announced, and um, there's two levels to this. One, you can be very, very excited, and two, you can be very, very pissed off. (laughs) I guess three, you could be both, which I think I am. Yeah, that's Um, kind of where I am, too. C.J. Abrams was selected as the Nationals lone representative, and I am ecstatic because there was part of me that worried he wouldn't get in just because of not politics but circumstance like every mm-hmm. team needs to be representative represented or have a representative and uh you know shortstop was a little bit deeper you know you thought trey turner was voted in if ellie de la cruz got voted in and then you know maybe one other shortstop then there might not be a spot for abrams right um so i was worried like just due to circumstance he wouldn't get in so i'm thrilled to see him get in and this isn't your token you know, every team's got to have one all-star nod. Like, he absolutely earned this. He's top absolutely. three among NL shortstops in every single category. Like, yeah. every single category that matters, he's top three, if not the leader. So, um, I thought he should have been the starter. I said it on this show. Um, I will stand by that. You know, I love Trey Turner to death. He's been hurt, right? Whereas C.J. Abrams has been not consistent, but Playing consistently <laughs> one of the best. Um, yeah. So... Uh, regardless, very happy he got in, but I'm very pissed off that Jake Irvin did not, um, yeah. and even that Kyle Finnegan did not. Like I, I think it's very difficult to make the All Star game as a reliever. You basically have to get voted in by the players um, because you know those extra spots will always go to pitchers or starting pitchers, I should say. Um, so I think it was like Robert Suarez and. Uh, I can't remember the other two yeah, I don't remember either. <laughs> that, that were there were in. So it's like, you know, it, it is what it is um, with, with Finnegan, but Irvin, I mean, so my thing is like guys like Logan Webb, Shota Imanaga, um, Tyler Glass now were like the three most comparable to Jake Irvin stats. I'm not saying they're not all-stars. I actually think they're all all-stars, but if they're all-stars, then so you know, then Jake Irvin needs to be an all-star as well. Exactly. Uh, like one of the final two spots, one went to Logan Webb and one went to Paul Skeens. I sat here on the show and said Paul Skeens should be the starter for the all-star game, right? So I'm not going to be a hypocrite and say he shouldn't have been an all-star, but it's the same point. If Paul Skeens is an all-star, Jake Irvin for sure needs to be an all-star. And that's kind of where I'm at. So it, it's frustrating to have someone so deserving get snubbed. But it's also cool to like be in a position to actually have a snub for once yeah, <laughs> and no, actually it's... have a second guy that should have got in and you can be pissed off, right? And it's kind of a rallying cry for the fan base in some respects. 
Um, I guess, you know, if someone gets hurt or their start date is too close to the All-Star game, Irvin or Finnegan can, you know, backdoor their way into an All-Star nod and be a replacement selection. But I think Irvin actually is going to start Saturday or Sunday, so I don't even know if he would be an all or a replacement selection because, you know, he would fall into that same category. He probably wouldn't be able to pitch in the All-Star game anyway. So that's frustrating, but happy for CJ, pissed off for Irvin. It is what it is for Finnegan. i got another stat for you about Jake Irvin. Would you like to hear it? Absolutely. There are two pitchers in baseball that have more innings pitched and a lower ERA than Jake Irvin. Ranger Suarez, Zach Wheeler. Yep. That's it. End of list. Mm-hmm. Yep. Jake Irvin's an all-star, people. I don't care. I know that the voting probably happened before that July 4th start, but that July 4th start cemented the fact that he should be an all-star. Uh, eight innings pitched, eight Ks dominated uh, eight scoreless innings eight scoreless shut them out probably could have gone in the ninth honestly um i wanted that to. In... i really wanted him to. <laughs> I, I know like that's a hypocrite because i definitely would have like, been pissed at davy if something had gone wrong but i really wanted him to go cg shut piece yeah that would have been awesome but you know they got the w uh so that was that was cool um yeah finnegan's kind of like yeah you know he was re- he's really good um I would obviously love to see him make it, but I'm not going to get upset about that one. I'm more upset about Irvin. But Mm. C.J. Abrams, let's celebrate. Obviously, he's had an incredible first half of the season. Uh, Offensively, I believe he's first in all of baseball in shortstop slug, if I'm not mistaken. I I think he even passed Mookie uh, before Mookie got hurt. Uh, So that's, I mean, in terms of the offense, he's probably been one of, if not the best shortstop in baseball this year. Um, obviously, we would like to see more from the base running, um, but that's kind of a team-wide thing. That's not really just on him. Uh, so, yeah, super, super excited for CJ. I mean, just it's, this is just the beginning. He's only 23. He's yeah. 23. That's crazy. Honestly, wild stuff because he's. it just feels like he's, again, you know, like Juan Soto, when he was here, it feels like he's been in the league for a while now, um, and yet he's this young. So um, can we get that extension going, by the way? Let's let's we, go ahead. We've and, missed the boat, man. Let's like, drop. I, let's drop the twelve year, whatever. Yeah, like we, I mean, we missed the boat. I think you're probably right. We should have got him earlier, but it, we got to try because this dude yeah. is a superstar uh, for for a long time. So yeah. super happy for him that he got in. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe hopefully uh, maybe Irvin could get in as a replacement. He would be the first replacement for me. I was anyone. gonna say I, I, he's got to be like the first one out. I like, can't think. I mean, there's. In. Who's gonna? Who's better than him right now that didn't make it? I don't. I can't. I don't have anyone off the top of my head, but I don't have anyone either. Yeah, so. he's at the. He's top five or six in every single category. Like All of he's got to be. In. <laughs> he's got to be in. So yeah. Even if he has to get replaced at the end of it, like just he's an all star in my heart. Give him the yeah. Give him the. <laughs> so. Yeah. So that, that that's frustrating, but happy for CJ. I know he'll put on a show, um, and he was definitely the 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 right one to get the nod um from the position players he was really the only one option although i guess jesse winker was uh you know a contender in some respect but um yeah cj cj was the right choice so we'll see how the all-star game plays out um i guess this will be kind of the last time we record before the the derby and the all-star game um so far the derby has gunner bobby witt pete alonzo and um alec bomb <laughs> yeah yeah, no wonder I was forgetting. Insert that dragon meme with all yeah, the... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, I thought it was funny how... And everyone's talking about this. Like, Pete Alonso's uh, whatever about the Home Run Derby just snaked his way into an all-star selection because you have to be an all-star to participate in the Derby. So You do? Pete Alonso, oh, yeah. They, they changed it. Oh, wow. I didn't even know that. Yep. So uh, That's dumb. <laughs> yeah, everyone was like, Lindor hasn't been an all-star since 2019, which I He I should guess, also be on the team, by the way. I yeah, mean, let's be honest. Yeah, but, you know. You know, you can't fit everybody, unfortunately. Right. Turner so, Turner being the starter is the thing that ruined the shortstops in the National yeah. League because he shouldn't, he didn't play enough games. I love Turner, he's great, but he yeah. didn't play enough. I'm sorry. Yep, that's where voting matters, folks. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and fan voting is awesome. Yep, yep, so... Uh, of those four, I, obviously we still have half the field yet to be determined. But who who do you like of those four? Gunner, man. I mean, it's got to be Gunner. 
It's, it's gotta, gotta be, be Gunner. He, it's because he he's got power, easy power to all fields as well. I mean, Bobby Witt can go to right center, but not not quite as easily as I think Gunner can go to center and left center. Uh, so I'm at, right now I'd say him, but obviously we got four more uh, left to uh, be revealed. Yeah, and obviously Pete. I mean, he's good at it, so he's got to be. bringing back least... the uh, the pitching coach that he wanted. Yes, so. that's right. Yeah, he's gonna have uh, what's coach, his name? Uh, Dave Jouse. Shoot. Yeah, Jouse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that he's obviously on the radar, but I'm going Gunner out of those. Yeah, got to got to throw a few bills on. Uh, not, I like buy my bills are one dollar bills. Um, <laughs> got to throw a few bills on on Pete Alonzo just to to cover one's ass. But, yep, yeah, excited <laughs> and then. Uh, MLB draft on Sunday as well. We will have another episode coming out this week. Uh, Monty, who you guys may know, familiar face, uh, will be joining us to talk MLB draft and we'll talk Nats picks and options at number 10 um, specifically, as well as some steals in the later round. So excited about that. It's the best time of the year, July, lots going on. Things are heating up. The Nats are making their own fireworks within their roster. You know, MLB draft, all star break, trade deadline in a couple weeks best time of the year can't wait to cover it all but that does it for this episode be sure to check us out on twitter in the meantime at district bsb trays at reverse two r's two s's myself at the coach moose be sure to check us out on youtube tiktok at district baseball videos coming out every single week sometimes every single day if we can get off our ass Um, (laughs) but yeah great stuff trey appreciate you and until next time let's go baseball let's go nats baby